dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's Resident Evil, the deck building game. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, today is the 25th and we're taking a look at Resident Evil, the deck building game. That's right, and this came out uh, in 2010, produced by Bandai, and it was designed by Tyler Allid Alliden, A-L-L-I-N-D-E-R, whatever. Uh, I'll... Allender. Allender, Allender. And it's a one wonder... It's a... It's a one to four player game, and there was, uh, what, four other expansions that came out? Yeah, here, let's, let's go through them real quick. So, we're going to say the one that you need to get is this one. I want to bring this one up first. I don't care what order they are. That's Outbreak. That's the second expansion. It, so this Outbreak. one you need to get. Yes. If you like this game, if you want to like this game, right. you need to get this. And funny enough, uh, there is a small little guy in here, so if you just got these two, they'd all fit in here. Yes. So that actually is kind of nice. So, whatever. Um, uh, the first, is it, which one is that? Mercenary? Is that the last expansion? Okay, fine. We'll do... What, what was the second one? Or the second first expansion? One, I'm sorry. The first one was Alliance. Okay. He's got the boxes. So there is Alliance. Okay, and then came out... This one introduces uh, the partner thing, so right, right away. Right. Uh, and then after that was um, the outbreak. You saw, hello. <laughs> and then you went to... Uh, which one's that one? Mercenaries, right? Or was it... Mercenaries Nightmare? Mercenaries was the last. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Nightmare. Nightmare was the next I, I, one. I know that he'll be all... Whatever, if I don't do it in the right order. So. Nightmare came out after that, and then uh, this one Mercenary. doesn't introduce much. In fact, it introduces the only broken thing in the game, and we'll get to that. Yes, and then Mercenaries was the final one, which was the first broken box that he picked up. And this one introduces skill cards. Nope, it's upside down. Skill cards. So, so this one is a possibility. So, yeah, I think of all the all the expansions, if you don't need all the characters and all that stuff, which that's kind of why I got them. Um, the Nightmare one is the only one that doesn't add enough to it. It adds, like, time bonus, I think, it has there. And it definitely ramps up some difficulty, but it also gives you a really broken weapon once you right. get to that. Right. Anyway. So the one that you absolutely need as far as expansions go is Outbreak. Is because Outbreak. that one... The original. Yeah, the original game is a little slow, but the second you put Outbreak in there, you have to move. Okay, I want to I wanna say this real quick. Okay, so... The core game comes with this weird divider, right? It's really kind of badly designed because if you move the box like this, they'll all fall out and whatever. Yeah. There's so much room that's not utilized, and this really is only good for the like the main game. I it, it came in the original box. I ripped it out and and traded it for one of these because what happens is once you get all the expansions, you have a hell of a lot of cards, but they'll all fit in one box. So I, I transported it, and see, I even have foam for, you know, the next expansion if they ever have one. Yeah, divider. Um, so there's just this basic, you know, box that divides right in the center, and then you just have two long rows, so you just stagger them. Um, they do have a lot of divider cards. Unfortunately, it did not come in the core game, these nice uh, divider cards that have what they are on here. Like, this one is characters, so you put the characters in front, whatever. Um, so you have to get a few different of the expansions in order to get all the dividers you need. But still, it's it's far preferable to carrying more than one box. It's it's a nice heavy box, really full. They did a good job. We've taken cards out, so it's even more packed than what it is right currently. Yeah. Um. So that's what I did. Is I so I could have the original box and carry all my cards. I had to transplant. Um. Anyway, so I just wanted to say that because that that first insert is ridiculous. Okay. They had no business doing that. So let's get into the game. The basic setup, that or I guess the premise is, you go into the mansion and you search for things and you you buy stuff in your pool and you try and kill the main bad guy. And there's different scenarios all covered in each of the uh, uh, game booklets. Uh, and basically the scenarios, the scenarios just tell you what can go into the pool and you know what possibly goes into the mansion and how to play. Uh, outside of that, it's pretty much all the same. Yeah, we're gonna do a custom scenario here. Yes. Uh, so if you've ever played Thunderstone or if you're, you know, uh, if you're familiar with that format, that's the way it goes, is we lay out all the cards, all the stacks, and then we're able to purchase as we can from each of the stacks till they run out. Right. So they're all, all the cards are set out in the, the, the beginning as opposed to like Legendary or something where the cards come out five at a time or whatever. Right. Um, so, so we're going to do that. He's got the uh, uh, starting stuff. Yeah, so you have, um, you have basic resources, um, which, which every game has. Essentially, you should have 16 
uh, it's not 16, 18 things in front of you as far as what you can choose from. Um, let me just put these out real quick. Uh, and what you're going to choose from is you have items, events, and weapons. Uh, really, the only items that you have are... Actions, not events, but... Oh, actions. Sorry, sorry, actions. Um, in this case, what do we have? We have uh, our starting hand is this. These are our starting, uh, our basic resources, rather. You have the three types of ammo, 10, 20, and 30. Uh, you have the knives, the handguns, and then a healing thing, which is usually the green herb. Uh, and then you have, what do we have, five weapons and seven, seven actions. A seven actions. And then you have your starting hand. Uh, you're, you, they tell you what to start with your, your basic deck, which is usually uh, seven times ten ammo, uh, two weapons, and then a handgun. Well, two, two oh, knives. What did I say? You two said knives. weapons. Sorry, hand weapons. Pretty general. Two, yeah. Yeah, so the, you need to start with ten cards because your, your hand is five, so they always do that, you know, two hands worth right. of cards. So you shuffle them up, you draw the first five, and that's going to be your starting hand. Um, there, when you draw from the core game, you go from the combat knife, and then there's a survival knife. So you could be lucky enough to get that. And then there's a burst firearm for the handgun, so you could be lucky enough to get that. I got I, it. I'm lucky enough to get the the uh, the survival knife, for, and he's lucky enough to get the burst handgun. Just so you he's saying see lucky that. because he did it on yeah, purpose. Yeah, I cheated. Uh, so anyway, so these are my first five cards. And so we have a deck of mansion cards, and they are just a little deck here, and they're shuffled randomly. There is one baddie in here that is the, I'm going to show you right here. Well, no, I don't know where he is here. Um, he shuffled in. There's one baddie that you need to defeat in order to, let's say, close the mansion, even though it's from another game, but still. So right here, he is the baddie, Tyrant T2. So when he comes up, if you don't defeat him, he's going to go in the bottom. No, he's going to be shuffled into the deck. Right. Um, any other monster, if you don't uh, defeat them, they will go in the bottom of the deck. Uh, so that is our mansion deck, and so we're trying to get through that. I'm just going to put it here so everybody can see. And uh, so that's it. So we both begin with our, our set. We're going to decide who goes first. Let's say that I go first. Yay. Um, so with my resources that I have available to me, I'm going to decide. So what do I buy? Do I go into the mansion? You don't have to go into the mansion. Um, so let's see. I've got actually two of my knives and my gun and only 20 ammo. Now the ammo cards uh, count both as ammo and gold. So it's not either or. It's both at the same time. So I can use 20 ammo to power my handgun, which requires 20 ammo to do 10 damage. Uh, and I can spend 20 points worth of gold. So I'm going to look out here and see if what's worth 20. I can get another handgun. <laughs> Don't care. I can get an herb, which would, might be nice. Um, I can also... No, I can't get any actions yet. I can get a melee. Uh, so yada yada, you choose what you want. I guess I'm just going to go for... Uh, not see, I guess I'll go for an herb because I can't quite afford the ammo that I want. So that's it. I think I am going to go into the mansion, though, because I have enough to power my handgun, and then I have two knives. So my survival knife says, it has a little text on the bottom that says, uh, this weapon gets plus 5 damage for every other knife weapon during this turn. So this one gets 10 plus 5 because I'm playing this. So together, these are worth 20, and then another 10. So I have 30. I'm going to go into the mansion. Hopefully it's 30 or less. And it is. It's just a 10. Uh, when this infected is defeated, select another player. That player gains one ammo plus ten. So I can... It doesn't have to be you. It could be me. Does it say other player? I think you read other. Oh, yeah. Okay. Select another player. But that's actually not necessarily helpful because it kind of... That's the starting hand stuff, so it kind of clunks up his hand. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, this is an expansion, just so you know. They don't, they don't ever do that in the core game. Um... But he's only worth 10, and he does 10 damage if I wasn't able to defeat him, but I am, so I defeat him. He has a little uh, decoration point here, which is my victory point, which I will add to character. And we didn't actually, we skipped over that part. Oh, we didn't we should our have characters. chosen our characters. Now, these are all the characters available right now, all the expansions and whatnot. But I usually do, so here's three, take one, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, there is a dynamic illustrated in there as far as how you take your character, yeah, but we do it this way. Because of the here. expansions, there are some characters that do uh, partners, which I don't really appreciate that, and so we yada yada. Well, let's just pick. I'm going to pick Ada Wong here. So Ada Wong, I just defeated one decoration point, so I'm going to slip that under Ada Wong, and she is one point closer to getting her first ability. There's a level one and a level two ability on most characters. Uh, I think Nightmare had an expansion where there's only one. Oh, no, Mercenaries, because you have skills. Anyway, um, regardless, uh, so I have one point towards 
I need four for my level one ability, which when I get four worth of decorations, uh, I will be able to explore and I can look at the top car of the mansion and move it to the top or bottom of the mansion. So that's helpful if I have just a little bit of, uh, you know, weapon or I have a lot of weapon and I want to make sure that I get the most out of it. So I can look at the top, I can peek basically Ada Wong's ability. So when I unlock that, I'll be able to do that. Her level two ability is um, at eight. So when I get eight points worth of decorations, monster skilled. Uh, at the beginning of the turn, I can get one action and, and minus one buy. So I can skip my buy and do actions. That actually leads us to... Uh, what you can do, you can you can buy and you can do an action, which is you know search or right. or one buy one action or whatever, and that that's that's it unless you have cards that allow you to do others. Yep. So that's so like it. the merchant can, gives you an extra buy, but he's an action, so you're wasting an action to play him out unless you have another card that says you can play an action. Right, and we'll get to that in a second. You want to go over your character that you picked? Oh, my character. My character is Josh Stone. I picked him because he has 80 health. Uh, he has his first level one is zero decoration, so it's automatic that it only comes into play. And basically, what it says is when Josh's health is healed for the first time during your turn, you get plus twenty gold. So the first time I'm healed completely, or yes, my health is healed. It doesn't say completely; it just says healed. I gain twenty gold. So as long as I heal myself, I get twenty gold. Okay. Um, and then at seven decorations, I get to as long as I have full health, return a weapon from my discard pile into my hand. Okay, so it is fun that each character has different abilities. Uh, that that's a real difference, I think, to this game that really makes it feel more personal. Is that you yeah. have a character that is different from everybody else's character. There are plenty of Leons in the game. There's a couple of Ada Wongs, you know, Ada Wongs and stuff. So I usually say only one of us can have that, you know, kind of thing. So we have an order or whatever. So it makes more thematic sense. Um, so anyway, uh, so I picked up the herb, I put it in my discard pile, boom, and then I draw my other hand, and now it's his turn. Oh, okay. actually, I was gonna go in. I did go in. Yeah. So your turn. I have uh, uh, four ammo times ten, which means that I have ten ammo and ten gold uh, per card. And I have my uh, burst rifle handgun or burst fire handgun. While attacking with this weapon, with more than one weapon, this weapon gets plus twenty damage. I don't have it, so all I can do is twenty damage. He he got a ten, but what's the chances of getting another ten? We don't know. Um, so let me buy first, just to be sure. I have forty uh, uh, gold that I could buy with. And so I am probably going to buy upgraded ammo. Which is usually smart to do in the first couple of rounds. Yep. Now you're going to go in? Uh, yeah, why not? I'm going to go in. This All goes right. into my discard pile. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, it is a 20. And I kill him because I do 20 damage. Well, good job. So there you go. Yeah, I have a decoration. Okay, so that's it. Uh, the ammo doesn't get spent that way. Um, you Again, you usually build up, and then you grab more actions, and then you have actions in your hand, blah, blah, blah. I'm, we're not going to go through the whole thing, because that would take too long. Uh, I just wanted to kind of talk about some of the different cards. I've purposely laid out a few of the different cards. Um, in the expansions, I really appreciate that the ammo cards have little uh, actions that you can take, little right. effects that you can take. So, like, for instance, actually, the 20 is the most helpful. Yes. Because when you defeat an infected during this round... Uh, this ammunition this ammunition can be trashed, and I can upgrade to a 30. So it, it comes from a 20 to a 30 if I defeat somebody that turn. So I really like this. This one, I think, allows you to, at the end of your turn, if this card is not in the play area, and you did not, is in your play area, and you did not explore, um, you can move this uh, ammunition to the top of your inventory. So you can say, okay, well, I didn't use it this time. I'm going to use it next time. Right. So that's nice. I like that added ability. Uh, the base 10 still does nothing, so that's fine. Um, the herb is nice just because it does 20, but they also have vials, which will heal you more or less, depending whether you combine them with other yeah. herbs, red or green, and, uh, maybe what stage of damage you have, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of options there. Uh, basic handgun, the knife, there is like a survival knife that allows you to trash it and another custom firearm or whatever that allows you to trash it for certain benefits. So if you use it and then want to trash it, you can, you know, get rid of that card in your hand and possibly get something better. Um, then there's just, you know, basic weapons like shotgun, uh, that, uh, this one has a pump action shotgun, well, automatic shotgun, I'm right. sorry, automatic shotgun that's really powerful, but takes 80 ammo. So that's going to be randomly, you know, shuffled in here. And so it's like, Hey, I get the first shotgun. And then all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, crap. You know, the next one is 80, eight worth 80 gold. This is the price up here. Um, so, but that's the, that's pretty normal for a lot of these weapons is they have one uber powerful weapon that's mixed in which i also really enjoy yeah because it could be you know you could actually 
you know, make it more difficult for the next guy to get another one. Not that you want to do that. Although, um, with the second expansion, I think they started doing competition where I might want to screw him over a little bit to be the last one alive or whatever, which doesn't make thematic sense, but it does add another level to the game. You don't have to play that way. Um, then there are things like grenades, which are one-time use. You use them and they go away. Unless you have an awesome character that lets you put them back in your inventory, which I sometimes get, which is really fun. Um, but they're also cool because if you're playing in a versus mode, there's a lot of different modes. If you're playing in like versus mode, or I can't remember what the other mode is, it'll affect every character, like to your left and right, you know, right. kind of thing. So I might actually be doing damage to them or whatever. Uh, so that that's kind of fun. Then you have no ammo uh, weapons, which take no ammo. And I've actually got two of them laid out here. This one is a bow and arrow, which is awesome. Uh, but it is 110 gold, so you're not going to get it for a while. But every time it comes out, you don't need ammo. You just can use it automatically. Now, there are some baddies that came with, I think, another expansion, not the one that had this, um, that you cannot hit them with no ammo weapons. So they did try to balance that out with uh, different types of baddies. Um and then you have the other no cost, which is just kind of a melee, which I think is kind of fun, like a little kick or punch. Yeah. I don't know if you need a card for that, but it's still it's fun. And it says, you know, like in story mode, you get plus five when a character is, has uh, 80 or higher, you know, damage kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of variety. Like I showed you, there are a ton of cards. So uh, to use them all, you're going to have to play several, several times. Yep. Um, so now we mentioned, or I mentioned, that there is a broken weapon in the game. I put it out here so that we can talk about it. You want to talk about it? Uh, okay, sure. I'm kind of bogarting, so... <laughs> it's fine. So we have the flamethrower, and the flamethrower is is just crazy, really. It's just pretty much uh, X equals five times the number of cards in your discard pile, and X is the number of damage. So if I have 50 cards in my discard pile, I'm doing five times 50 damage. So that's, what, 250 damage? So I'm going to kill whatever pops out. It's just, it's just crazy powerful. And you already have two powerful things that are already in the mansion. Essentially, you have mansion cards to indicate that you found those. And that's the, uh, that's the rocket launcher and the minigun. So if you have either of those, you're pretty much golden anyways. This one is anyone can buy it. Anyone can use it. And it's not even an ammo uh, uh, source needed. You need it's how many cards you have in your discard pile. So it's just crazy powerful. Yeah, so unless you're really tailoring your deck, and I think that came, I'm pretty sure it came in the Nightmare, which does make it a little more difficult. You have time and all that stuff where you have to get through. So that can make sense. But used in the rest of the context of the game, it's it's way overpowered, especially if you have any card that allows you to, like, um, there's, there are cards or weapons that say if you don't attack anything, you can, like, search through your deck until you find another weapon and then put that on top for free, or you can take from your discard pile and put it on top. So you could literally use it, then take from your discard pile, put it back on top, you know, and use it again every turn. Some characters allow you to do that, you know, take one card from your hand and put it on top, you know, whatever. So, so there are some possibilities of being fairly broken with this. I think there's another, there's a couple of different actions that allow you to use you know, this times whatever your inventory is, which that's your main deck, or what your, you know, times your discard that really amp up weapons a little bit too much for my liking. Um, then we have the actions, right? So there are a bunch of different types of actions. I tried to kind of get a good smattering of that. Uh, we'll just start with uh, the mercenaries, which this one I brought out because it, it is one that affects other players. Uh, choose another player. That player reveals their hand, and you select and discard a weapon from it, if any. Your character deals an additional X damage during the turn, where X the, is the damage of the discarded weapon. So Thanks. I can basically steal a weapon from another player uh, to use that one turn and make him discard it. Uh, and then, let's see, we have uh, Raccoon City here. Um, discard cards from the top of your inventory until you discard a weapon. Uh, move that weapon to your hand, which that's kind of the sort of thing I'm talking about. Uh, this one has another effects here. I get plus two ammo, which is not helpful unless you're the lone wolf, but maybe, I don't know. And then uh, plus one action. So remember we said you could only play uh, or have one buy action, one action, and um, this one will allow you to have play two actions. Yeah, in hand. In including that one. So you're playing an action, and then you get another action right after it. So let's see. The merchant is always really helpful yes. because you get a plus one buy action, plus 20 gold, and uh, card. another card. Another card is very helpful, yes. for sure. Especially because the hand limit's five. It's, that's kind of like the least that I think I've seen in a deck building game. Usually it's six or seven. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then the foyer is simply just draw two extra cards. 
Uh, we've got uh, Deadly Aim, which your weapon gains uh, plus 10 damage this turn, and it all also provides uh, 20 ammo. Yeah, all your weapons, so that one's a really nice card to yeah. have. Um, we have this one, which you can trash a card from your hand, then you get plus one card, so you can basically say, no, yeah, I don't want that card. No, it's plus one card, and oh. then I get a plus action Sorry. as well. So, so this is a nice one to have. You definitely want to have at least one type of action that lets you get rid of cards, yeah. uh, trash them. Because so, especially with the ten ammo, you're gonna you're gonna not need those soon. You're gonna want to stick to the thirty. Yeah. Ammo. So let's, let's say that I could do that. I, I I've got a hand of all tens, so I can trash one of these tens, which means I put it back into play, and then I draw a card. You know, and these would be shuffled, yada yada. I'm just gonna do that because I want to show you guys what happens if. Uh, if I get failed later on. So anyway, then the last one is to deal with the infections. And we're going to go over this real quickly. Um, this is the way that I think that this should always be played. Yeah, is outbreak. with the infection. Because it kind of adds that other element that you have to monitor. Right. The issue is you could sit there and just build your deck without ever going into the mansion. Yeah, make There's sure no... you're uber powerful, then yeah. go into the And then go into the, the There's mansion. no time limit. Um, so in, I think, Nightmare, there is a time limit. Or maybe it's Mercenaries. There is a time bonus thing that you have to find, like in the in the mansion deck, in order to add more time, that sort of thing. But it also works with the infection because if you're not monitoring the, the infection, that acts as a timer as well. Uh, so anyway, this one is specifically for infection, and I just discard any number of cards from your hand, then draw the same amount. That's just kind of a free action, and then um, you can trash this card. In that case, just increase your infection level by one. So it's just a quick shot in the arm to get rid of an infection. Gives you another action, so you play this first. And it does matter, of course, what order you play them. Yes. So you can't play, let's say, this one, you know, merchant, which has no plus one action, and then play this one that has a plus one action. You'll want to play this one first, so then you can play the merchant, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so anyway, that that's that. Now the infection, I'll go over that. There are uh, a bunch of infections in here. You random randomly, you know, mix them up, and that's the infection deck. We're just gonna put it by the mansion deck. You can either do your normal, uh, you know, buy and whatnot, and then go into the mansion, or you can elect to not go into the mansion and get an infection. Right. So, so basically, it's if you're gonna push out and continue to build up your deck, then you're gonna have to take an infection. Right. So you need to monitor that, and it, it it gives you more incentive to go in right away. Plus, usually when you play, there's like an antivirus card that's mixed into the de the, the the mansion here, and that's another thing is there are event cards and uh, helpful item cards or stuff that can be mixed in here. Um, we found that it's really easy to get an unbalanced deck if you mix too any too many of them in. So like keep it to like five or something. I yeah. don't know. Five non monsters. Yeah, events. yeah, like helpful things. Five yeah. The events are fine because those are usually nasty. But but the other ones, you know, you, you don't want to be like, I don't know. It, there's nothing worse than like having like I have a hundred damage. I'm gonna take out just about anything. Go in there and it's like a you know a treasure chest or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, or a treasure map. It's like ah whatever. And it's still helpful to you, but it's like, ah, damn it. Just wasted all that power. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I think it's the first to ten or whatever infected. Um, and then you become a zombie and then you have to attack You become an friends. infected character and you use these cards to then attack. Now, right. that's never been terribly compelling. It gives you something to do, though, while you know the other guys are continuing. But it's pretty hard because you mix in all your other items and you can't use any of these other items. So you can only use the infections. So you have 10 infections, but you might have 20 cards in your deck, so you have 30. So it's a 1 in 3 chance of getting an infection that you can use. You know, kind of thing. And one of the other things about becoming infected is you 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 are still you, but you also get an infected persona, which is a, a, on the side. Right. And they have special build abilities. So, uh, I think one of them was if you have uh, a knife, then you can also use the knife in addition to the infected. No, that cards. was my special rule. Oh, that was your there special is no, rule. Okay. There is no my, my bad. Like that. Sorry. But these different these different cards have you know like he does plus five damage plus uh, this character is attacking uh, each character or the. I'm sorry, the character that he's attacking takes five damage for any other bile vomit cards. That's what this is, a bile vomit cards. So if I could play a bunch of these together, then that would multiply, but chances are I'm not going right. to be able to do that. Um, and you really can't get rid of things, although I think there is one character that lets you get rid of a few non-infected cards or whatever to amp up you as a zombie kind of thing. But you never last that long. You're just kind of a mild annoyance. And people can explore and just kick your ass. You know, Instead of going to the mansion, they can just go after you. Uh, so anyway, but it, it's still very highly 
uh, important, I think, for the game to feel like it's moving along and to feel not overly cheap, like, hey, we're just going to sit back, I'm going to get 50 grenades, we're going to go in there, no problem. You right. Know? It's like there, there's too much of that when you're just kind of not having any kind of other incentive to go into the mansion. Um, and people do get to the you know last infection, and then all of a sudden a card comes out that says everybody gains one infection or something like that. You know, a villain that comes out. Um, and, yeah, so in my opinion, it's very important to have that. Yep. Uh, what else is there to say? I mean, there's, there's just so many options in this game. Yeah. Um, my favorite deck building game right now is Legendary, and I think you'd probably agree. Yeah, I love Legendary. This is probably my second. I love this one too. Yeah, this is a great game. It's it's so much different than Legendary, so it's uh, you keep on bringing up apples and oranges. I think it's the same here. I think they're two different types of deck building game. This one is really fun. I have a lot of. I want to play it right now. Yeah, I mean, there's there's you know kind of a thematic quality, although you you can find er errors in it. It's like eh, I don't know why. You know, why, yeah, why does all this stuff carry with me every time I go into a new room or whatever? And I've come up with house rules that kind of are fun to play every once in a while. But the core game is still really fun, and most people have fun playing it. A lot of them think, oh, it's Resident Evil. It's probably not good because it's like a movie tie-in. You know what I mean? It's like the same sort of thing. It's right. like most most movie tie-in games aren't very good. Or, or video you know, game this one's tie-ins. already a vi- video game, so making a card game, they're just trying to make extra money. No, this is actually a very solid game. Very and legit. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is, I think so much more fun than Thunderstone. I know that a lot of people would disagree, but I I, I get the same feeling plus with this. Yeah. Especially because you get a unique character and uh, the mansion thing. There's not three out in a time and you have to like waste torches to get to them and stuff like that. So it is a little different, and that can be fun for sure. But altogether, I think it's partially because I'm, you know, partial to the Resident Evil uh, but I just I have a lot of fun. It's just the matter of a few little things. If you put them together, it becomes broken and too easy. Yep. But so that happens really with this gotta... many cards. You know, yeah. it's going to happen. Except for a flamethrower, that's just always going to be overpowered. But that's just us. But I would say, um, if you're interested, get the core, get outbreak, and then just if you want more, then buy the expansion. You don't need to buy any more expansions except for those two to see if you like right. it. I would say just buy the core game. But again. There's such a temptation to just sit back and do nothing that I think the outbreak is really essential. Agreed. Said that like a million times, so I must believe it. Yep. So is there anything else that we want to say? We nope. didn't talk about the tokens. The outbreak oh. actually comes with these nice tokens. Yeah. Um, well, this is just your health. So you have fives and tens, fives on one side, tens on the other. Uh, oh, one of the dynamics that you do have is, let's say I have 80 health and I lose all of my 80 health. Well, I'm dead. Kind of, but I can come back to life only instead of having 80, I put a minus 20 there, meaning that I have 60 health. So when that 60 goes around, I'm dead, but then I can come back and do another minus 20, meaning that I have 40 health, and then so on until I'm dead, dead for complete. Yeah, which, which I which I usually limit to one or two, yeah. especially because there's yellow herbs that will buff you up another 10 that you find through the mansions right. every once in a while. So I usually limit those to like two pass out, you know, revive kind of situations. Um, but yeah, the tokens are very nice to have. That's another reason to get Outbreak is because they have the tokens and they're very nice to have because otherwise you're going to have to keep it on a piece of paper or something like that. Yeah, or and I hate it when games chips. do that. I really hate it when they have such an easy opportunity, you know, and yeah. that's really, it's funny the the smallest freaking expansion, the smallest box, box. has the most crap in it. Yeah. Um, you know, better rules, tokens, all that stuff. It even, it even came with another box inside of it. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, all right, guys. I think that's it. We could keep going on, you know, on and on and play this forever. It, it's a lot of fun. Yep. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow our great playlists. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a card game, art print shirts, stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, I will chat with you all day. We're also both blogging. You can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, releasing character sheets, updates of the world that I've created for 10 plus years. Take a look if you like it. Uh, share it. Support me that way. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com where I have short stories and poetry. So if you're interested, check that out. All right, guys. See you later. Oh, I did too. Helped a little I got it. Next time on Do a Review, the anime Chaos Head. the hell did that come from? Well, I know where it came from, but... Why did you do it now? I have no idea. Sometimes it just pops into my head. It's my childhood, man. Clean up, clean up.
That's right, that was a bar. Oh, I song. forgot to talk about skills. Oh, yeah. Um, skills are things that came in the Mercenaries uh, expansion, and... Um, yeah, they, they allow you various different things. Uh, most of those characters that came in that expansion only have one level, and so you can add one of these. And you, this one adds, like, experience points and all that stuff. Um, I find this to be very, very easy. Like, it makes it so... You're just super overpowered. Um, but you would trade in a number of experience points in order to get this skill and add it to your character. So you just become kick-ass really quick. But it does a offer a fun dynamic, so... Uh, usually I kind of try to involve this and say that you you know give each character two or three that they can pick from in the game they can only use one um, but that it, it, it um, maybe takes the place of another one of their skills or something like that you need to have some kind of balance but they are fun I mean they definitely uh, give you even more options and that's what this this game does do well it gives you a lot of different options anyway that's it Damn it! Damn you, Salazar! Hooray! Hooray.